The first setting in the graphics menu is texture quality, and it's only accessible by clicking settings in the main menu. It can't be changed in game. Texture quality will have a major effect on things like graffiti and posters, while at the same time having a very small impact on performance. I'd only recommend low if you're really struggling for frames or if you have a smaller screen like a Steam Deck. Field of view slides from 70 to 100 degrees and comes at a performance cost of about 3 to 5%. Set this to what feels natural for your screen size. Depth of field is supposed to blur out the background elements, but in this game I really saw no difference in any conditions. Performance cost is 2-3%, but again, really no visual impact. Film grain will put an overlay over your game to make it look more like a motion picture. It's a 1 or 2% performance hit, but I prefer it off. Chromatic aberration adds a color fringing effect and blurs the outside edges of the game to emulate old film lenses. I turn this off, but it has no performance impact. Lens flare will produce a flare effect for every light source in the game. It has very little performance impact, but is very distracting, so I have this turned off. Motion blur adds a blur effect between frames, but it ends up turning very mushy when you turn fast or drive in cars, so I turn this off. There is very little performance impact. Contact shadows add shadows to small items in the game world like bottles and newspapers. I recommend having this on because there's no performance impact. No performance impact for improved facial lighting geometry, but I cannot really tell what it does. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments. Anisotropy or anisotropic filtering will make the ground appear sharper at a distance based on your viewing angle. I recommend at least 4x, but 16x is preferred. A large visual improvement for 2 or 3% hit. Local shadow mesh quality will improve the visual fidelity of certain shadows. 1 or 2% performance hit, so I'd recommend keeping this higher medium. Local shadow quality will enable or improve your character shadow cast by things like street lights. 1 or 2% hit for an immersive setting. Cascaded shadows range will increase the distance in which high quality shadows are rendered. 1 or 2% drop and very little difference between medium and high. Cascaded shadows resolution will determine how sharp those cascaded shadows appear. Very little performance impact. Distance shadows resolution is a 1 or 2% hit, but does change your experience on larger and higher resolution displays, so I would keep this one on high. Volumetric fog resolution is how sharp or blocky your sunbeams are. This is the first setting to have a significant performance impact at almost 10% between low and ultra. So keep this down if you want extra frames. 1 or 2% difference between off and ultra in volumetric clouds quality. You'd at least want it on medium so they show up but I don't see a big difference between medium and ultra. No significant frame rate difference with max dynamic decals, but I also didn't see a big difference in visual fidelity. The amount of debris that was coming off the buildings and staying on the ground was essentially the same. Now we're into one of the big boys, screen space reflections quality, which can tank your frame rate by 73% from off the Psycho. This is a gradual decrease in frame rate as you increase the setting, but Psycho comes in with another 53% decrease from Ultra. Turn this off or keep it on low for the best performance, but don't increase it to Psycho if you want the best frames. This setting, even with everything else on low, will keep my 4090 under 60 frames per second in 4K.
subsurface scattering quality is supposed to improve the way lighting reacts on NPC skin, but I don't see a big difference in performance or fidelity. Ambient occlusion is another heavy hitter in terms of frame rate loss, with a 24% decrease in frame rate from off to high. Things do look much more grounded in the environment, so keep it on if you can, but if you need the frame rate, this is one of the first things to go. Color precision is supposed to decrease banding in color gradients. I didn't see much of a difference, and I doubt you'll see any difference in YouTube, but there's no performance hit. You don't see mirror quality unless you're looking in a mirror, so I would keep it on high even though the performance cost is pretty significant. I really had to hunt for level of detail. All I could come up with was a few extra windows and no performance impact. Crowd density will matter more depending on where you are, but more NPCs for about a 10% performance decrease. Now getting into the juiciest bit, ray tracing with ray traced reflections. This will add ray trace reflections to the ground, the water, glass, etc. It has a massive performance hit of 56%, only topped so far by psycho screen space reflections. So if you're between SSR or ray traced, this might be a better option depending on your graphics card. Raytrace Sun Shadows is one that I absolutely love. It takes that goofy shadow blob and turns it into an actual human shadow at the cost of about 23%. Raytrace Local Shadows is going to do the same thing, but with street lights and such. But you do have to have Local Shadows enabled in the settings for this to be enabled. Right off the bat, enabling ray trace lighting from off to medium will drop your frame rate by 56%. From off to psycho, 77%. Meaning this with the other ray trace settings can be devastating for your frame rate. You'll see more lights being cast, more accurate color, or the massive hit. It wouldn't be a cyberpunk video without overdrive or path tracing. The path tracing preview combines all the ray tracing settings together and adds a huge amount more bounces and rays. So you're left with extremely accurate lighting where each source casts its own color and shadow. Each light will also bounce realistically off each surface multiple times. So if you have, say, a red wall next to a white one, the red light would be cast indirectly onto the white wall. This is a technique used in many industries, but only recently have computers been able to render it in real time. And rendering it in real time is a stretch, considering with the best GPU available today, you will get an average of 22 frames per second in 4K with DLSS off, even on the lowest settings. This is why they call it a tech preview instead of an actual feature, since so few people will be able to utilize it and even those people will have to generate fake frames in order to get a playable frame rate. But at the end of the day, it is a very immersive technology. When you get rid of all the fake lights and have every light cast its own shadow and become its own light source, you create a lighting effect that really does emulate real life. Unfortunately, right now it just costs 88% of your frame rate. So DLSS is NVIDIA's solution to the terrible frame rate you get in overdrive mode. It's broken into a couple parts. DLSS 2 will render the game at a lower resolution, then use AI to upscale the frames to appear at a native resolution. DLSS quality mode has been shown to look better than having DLSS turned off in some games. This gets you a decent frame rate improvement, but DLSS 3 adds something called frame generation. This uses AI to generate a new frame between frames to increase your frame rate even further. There are some anomalies with this technique like ghosting and blurriness, but NVIDIA has since announced DLSS 3.5, which should use a new technique to decrease those issues. 
That will be out at the same time as Phantom Liberty. I'm using the lowest possible settings as a control, making sure to turn every setting on one by one so that no one setting is affected by another.